We are here at the 10th anniversary of the Midwest LSA Expo. Can't believe they've gotten to 10 years of this show, but here it is, and we're here once again, and once again, we're finding a new airplane I've not seen before. I knew about the Aeropract A32 Vixen, but now I'm seeing one uh, in the aluminum, I guess I'll say. I'm Dan Johnson talking with Dennis Long, who's going to tell me more about it. But before we talk about this new airplane, touch on your success that you've enjoyed with the A22, the predecessor. Looks similar, but you're going to hear all the differences. But tell me just a word about your success with the earlier airplane, Dennis. Well, I took over about three years ago, and I've sold 18. And I've got, by Christmas, I'll be up to uh, four more than that. Uh, two coming off the container next week. And two more probably just for Christmas. Pretty good in it's three been years' time. Very That's successful it. just by getting people to fly the plane and realize that uh, they're back in a big way. Now, one thing I got to say about that, and we won't keep talking about that one, we want to get to this one, but I want to mention that people sometimes say these LSA, these light sport aircraft, they're beautiful, they're just too expensive. They, some of them reach 200,000, some even exceed that, and I get it for a lot of people, that's just too much money. They might like it, but they can't afford it. The A22 that you've been selling has a much better price point. Give me just the basics of it. The Euro, where it's at now, about 1.16 rather than uh, using the year. Uh, starting plane is about 86,000. You can dress them up with glass panel and autopilot and parachute and get them over 100, but basically most of my customers are buying them anywhere between the 85 and 95 range. So Optioned exactly the way they want them. So there you go, there, there is the possibility, well under $100,000, uh, but that's a good price point. This one's a little more, but this has got a lot of changes on it. Let's, I, I'm not even sure where to start with all the changes, Dennis, but walk me through what you consider to be the most important changes, and then we'll get into some detail on it. Well, they just did a whole new fuselage, and the, the big part on the A-22, uh, people say, well, it's a great airplane up to the 110 miles an hour. Well, this one will cruise 130. 130 miles, you're talking miles an miles hour? Miles an hour. Okay, so Which that's... Which is 115 knots. Right, 115 knots. That's a very solid performance. That's a, that's like 20% better yeah, it is. than the previous one. Now, let me add one more thing there real quick. It, but it still stalls with flaps down at 30 miles an hour, just like the 22. Is that right? So they got more speed, did not lose the slow speed capability. That's pretty remarkable. Give me some ideas about how they've done that. Uh, all new fuselage. It's monocoque round all the way back, <laughs> reduced the frontal area, every place where they had drag they revisited how do they make the same wing go faster and it is even to myself it's rather amazing that they were able to make it go 25 miles an hour faster with the exact same wing. It's a little difference look to it as the where the fuel tank is. Uh, what they've done on the top instead of having the drop down in between the wings where you have the flat cabin top it's airfoil all the way across. So that allows a little bit less drag from the little drop down and the wingtip rotors off the center of the flat spot. Uh, the fuel tanks on this one are 30 gallons, 15 on each side, so it does have a bulge in the top. I see, because this one has the larger tank in it is why tanks. you've got that little hump up there. Yes. Okay, and the standard fuel tank is how much fuel? 24 gallons, 12 each side. And does it have that hump? It does not, it's okay. a flat top. So if, so if that if you don't need that distance and you don't like that look, you got an option. Correct. Okay, great. Uh, I, I think it's a very handsome thing, and I love the way they've done the center section. Plus, you know, now I'm just of average height, but you know, I'm putting my hand up here above my head, and I've got, you know, that's that's six or eight inches. I mean, even with a headset, I'm not even close to the top in this. And on this particular one, they got rid of the crossbars in the windshield. Yeah, it used to have a, a kind of an X right here. Yep, that's it's all gone. Wide open now. Uh, and the same flapper on handle system overhead, so it's identical wing to the A22. Okay, flaps are right here. Flapper it's the same, there, same right way there. it works yep. before. Push, push them my way and push they come down. Toward you and then we come down. There's 20 degrees. Might even be able to hear the notches yep. there as we go down. Yeah, I'm moving the headset to the back. So Just there's the one. Yep. I'm letting the sound be make a little noise on purpose. So there's your two notches. Very easy. Both pilots can get at it. That's right. Um, the joystick's different too, speaking of that. You used to have a yoke here. You can have it both ways, but Correct. it was commonly sold with a yoke. In the early days, I've sold more stick uh, is than that I right? yoke. I see, is that right? Okay. Um, there were some people that went to the yoke, because you know, if you've been trained in a Cessna, a Piper, or whatever, you Correct. used a yoke. I get that, that you want something you're used to. but And this one's available with a yoke also. Okay, you can go either way with either this one way. as well. But I love this. I mean, that's about as comfortable as it gets. My arm is just sitting at my, i got, got my elbow near my waist, and right on the stick and there's full forward 
There's full aft, so this is not a big range of motion to it. Got brakes on both sides, a handbrake here on both sides. Um, the throttle is now on the dash. Yeah, it's, and that's kind of where the yoke used to be, did it, it not? That's exactly where the yoke would be now. Okay. Come out of the same bushing. And now your throttle is right here. So if I'm going to be operating the aircraft uh, the normal way with hands on both controls, here I am, just easy as can be. But the fuselage is 100% new. It is 100% new from spinner to the tail. Okay. So, and a lot of that is smoothing, smoothening it up. If I look aft of the cockpit, you can see it very readily that the, there's there's sort of an angular look to the A22. This one's got a little smoother look. Is that some of what contributes to the good things? Absolutely, no angle changes. The air can flow smoothly around all the curves. There's no place where the air can separate. Uh, they went to an all-flying stabilator. I don't know why, but it adds a little bit different control feel to it. How so? Uh, the, when you're in the flare and you're trying to make motions, it's a lot smaller sensitive motions, because okay. otherwise the plane can try and bloom back. But once you fly both of them for a little while, it's not hard to get used so to. So all you need to do different. is be a little steadier on the That's controls. That's right, a little steadier on the controls. And, and how, well, we'll find out when we go fly, but it has, it, the you know just moving it here right now, there's there's a little resistance to it. It feels like it's a push rod. Is it that, push well, rod? Well, it's partially cable, partially push rod, okay. where the A22 is all push rod in that respect. So there's a little different feel to the controls than the A22. Uh, it's a little bit more friction yeah, what, for that's, small motion. That's what I was getting at. Is there, there? I feel a little bit of friction, which ah, sometimes I might say that's not a good thing, but especially with a uh, full flying stabilator being so effective, that's a good thing. It man. is a good thing, and it can be a good thing. And this is this airplane's only got four hours on it flying, so it, it they, may they, loosen up. They some tend more. to loosen up a little bit. Now, yeah. left to right controls uh, that feels lighter. Than it's, the four aft. Well, maybe it's about the same. Yeah, it's been pretty close. But it's, uh, but it's, but it's either way. It's got a little feel to give you feedback, but not so much that it's going to be a challenge to fly it. Correct. Okay. So, um, any other changes to the exterior of the airplane before we come back in? Uh, no. It uses basically the same landing gear. Nose gear is a trailing link. The main gear is aluminum leaf. Uh, very similar to the A22. So very durable and rugged. The center section underneath on the out is all boxed aluminum frame all the way across, so it's very rugged and durable like the 22. They kept those kind of features intact, but they wanted to just streamline the airplane and modernize it. Well, I think they've done a heck of a job with it. And it's cup holders it, now on and the dash. Yeah, and just, I was just looking at that, and I was looking at the uh, plastic construction around the joystick uh, mechanisms. It's just uh, kind of dressed up. That's what they did. Uh, very nicely and quite finished to me. So it's a nice look to it. All right, let's. Uh, I'm going to lower the door here. You'll still be able to hear me fine, but I want to have you talk a little bit about cabin width, which changed a bit here now. Door's not quite closed because we got our microphone cords going out, so I won't latch it. But even the latching mechanisms are nicely done. That's a simple little thing, but they look nicely finished to me. So. Is there a difference in the cockpit width? It's slightly narrower at the shoulders. Uh, the A22, where I would have four inches to my, well, you can see you got plenty. Yeah, I got, I got plenty there. I'm, if I go all the way to where I'm touching now, we're we're nearly a foot apart. Yeah. And you haven't gone to the outside, no. so so it's quite a bit of room. Where, as I said, straight, we're still several inches apart. We're not touching. They kept the same spacing between the seat center line. They just some unnecessary, unusable space, except really broad shoulders. They took some of that out. Just help keep the airflow tighter around again, the cockpit. Again, part of that overall smoothening effort Correct. they did. A skinny airplane flies better than a fat one. I'm going to put the air conditioning back on here. <laughs> Not that it's hot here today, but uh, uh, we want to have the air flowing through. A little bit larger panel for a little bit more instrumentation if they want to do that. It's a, it's a little wider than it used to be, as There's a little bit, but you still have the view down the front. Yep, yep, I can the see. The cutaway. Okay, I can't see the nose wheel, but I can see easily the runway right through this crack. And, of course, even with the... Uh, uh, door closed, I'll still have uh, visibility out here in these big giant doors, uh, windows that it's got. So, and it works out really well for that. Um, cup holders on the side of the dash <laughs> panel. Yep, right up here. I don't know if the camera can see that behind the pillar, but we still have the popular overhead storage pockets on both sides. Uh, okay, right. Place to put your uh, checklist, things like that. Correct. Seats are sliding now, adjustable from in inside. Okay, and how does that work? There's a Wire spring, you squeeze it down there together to pull ah, the pins in, uh, kind and then of a you pinch, slide. Pinching motion. Yep. They've um, inside the seats for getting into the luggage bin. Now you, there's no rods in the back here. It's all open. 
Oh yeah, right. So right. now, and the luggage bin is on the floor with a 66 pound uh, capacity. Back is that there. right? Wow, that's they've a increased lot. Okay. that. Uh, but they've opened it up. The visibility is still good looking back out the corners. Yeah, it's beautiful. Excellent visibility. But they just made it easier to get things into the luggage area with the seats tilt forward. So, and the luggage area's got a little cover over it as well to keep stuff down in there. Of course, you need to secure anything that's heavy, but uh, uh, light stuff that just the cover would do the job. Correct. But the seats just flip forward now, so it's a real easy load. Then. Yes, very much. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, and uh, so this airplane here, you've got loaded up, and this one's still reasonably priced. We're not, we don't even need to do the price number because those things change over time. But it's still a very affordable airplane, even loaded up with every option you can put. It looks like it's got a real substantial-looking parachute in it here. It's going to give you uh, the recovery you need if you run into one of those terrible situations. But that's great. And uh, instrument panel here, we've got uh, the Dynon HDX, it looks like. Yes. Uh, and a single uh, round instrument uh, for airspeed. Uh, a couple of fuel gauges, but otherwise everything's on the big screens, as, as we all know now. This one here, you've got autopilot on it as well. It doesn't lack for much, Dennis. It's got this one and the second one coming with the yoke. I did fully loaded because my customers seemed like they wanted fully loaded on this one. So, and but and the starting price range is basically you take whatever options on a 22 and it's 20,000 more for the identically equipped airplane. I see, okay. And for that, you're going to get quite a bit of extra speed, still retain the slow. Correct. All right, great. So a couple other features about the interior of the airplane. Uh, right down to the uh, inside of my inside leg uh, is a trim control, which is uh, uh, my arm is extended to reach it, but it's easily gotten to. Um, and in front of that, you've got the parking brake. Behind the joystick is where the parachute handle is located. Does that pull up? Yep. Okay, so that's a good position. You can you can lift a lot of weight that way. You got to really yank those handles, I know, to make the parachute work. That's what you want, not a hair trigger. But uh, that's a good position to do that. Either occupant can reach that as well. Um, choke is right here on this side, ah, so everything's on. just in front of the stick. And choke is another thing that, of course, you don't use that just when you're starting. So the one you really need to reach would be the uh, elevator trim. That's good. They're they're equipping all of the A32s with carb heat as standard. Oh, they are. Okay. Uh, cabin heat, carb heat. They're right here now. Okay. So everything is very easy to reach. They've got a nice clamping knob on each one for friction. Oh yeah, I see friction that. Okay. Clamp yep. it down. Yep. Uh, uh, twist to twist to tighten. Friction lock. A standard, the fuses instead of circuit breakers because the fuses you can buy in any hardware store or ah, car okay. store anywhere around the world. Okay. Another part of the overall effort to keep the price reasonable, I'm sure. Correct. Which engine are you using on the A32 Victor? The ULS is the only engine available at this time. That's the 100 horsepower carbureted engine. Correct. Okay. You're and what prop are you swinging? Uh, the Kiev is the standard prop, okay. but we have the optional warp drive or any of the Duke series props are all approved. Okay, all right, so uh, let's talk a little bit about how you deliver the airplane then. Uh, you have your, you told me you just got your SLSA approval on this, so good on you. I need to add you to my list, but uh, that's great. Um, so you're selling an SLSA ready to fly airplane for those that want to turn the key and go Correct. after proper training and you're making sure they've got the right experience, of course. But uh, will you offer them to do an ELSA if they want to have that option? Correct. All right, let's shift gears now to uh, somebody that got all excited about this thing. Says, got to have one, Dennis. What's the delivery schedule? What, what, what can you do for people on this? Most people, if they order, I can pretty much guarantee within six months from the day you commit, you can have the airplane in your hands. Okay. Sometimes faster, depending on the certain times of the year. But right now, we have not exceeded six months on delivery of any airplane in the three years I've been selling. Okay, yeah, I was going to ask you, has that been your experience? But you just answered the question. It is. So, so Aeropract, uh, which is a company in uh, Kiev, Ukraine, um, and they, uh, 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 I've been to the factory there some years ago, probably maybe looks quite different now, but quite a proper airplane factory. They clearly know how to build a nice airplane, and they have got the delivery down. How many airplanes are flying from the Aeropract company all around the world, Dennis, uh, uh, approximately? Over 1,000. More than 1,000? Yes. All right, so they've uh, done very well. So uh, you're going to give us uh, information now that uh, for people who want to maybe make an order, but maybe have more questions, whatever it is they want to do, Dennis, tell me what the website is that we direct them to. It's www.aeropractusa.com. Very good, Dennis. Thanks for talking with us about it. I've got more information about Aeropract and lots of affordable aviation models. You can find all that on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Dennis Long and myself here at the Midwest LSA Expo.